Well, I'd like to welcome you to this overview of Microsoft Word. And so this particular first lesson is really not lesson one. It's the overview. And what it will do is it will help establish a foundation for understanding how Microsoft Word operates and what are the main sections of Microsoft Word. When I introduce a new technology, I like to introduce it many times using just pencil and paper or chalk and chalkboard. And so what I'm gonna do is draw first so that you can get a nice conceptual model in your mind of the seven main sections of Microsoft Word. So let's go ahead and jump right in. When you open up Microsoft Word, basically the application opens up as a window, or you could just say a big square. And the main area where you work inside of Microsoft Word is really the document area. And what I'd like you to do is, as you listen to me, um, take note of how to replicate this particular lesson yourself in your own classroom. Because many of you across the country, you don't have a computer in front of every student. And so before going to the computer lab or giving them instructions of what they need to do when they go home, just give them a lesson right there in your classroom, not at the computer. One thing I want you to take note of is the vocabulary that I use. It's important that your students understand and learn the vocabulary. And so when I say this is a document area, that's a very specific vocabulary that Microsoft Word has defined for its application. So section number one, and we're going to talk about the seven sections, is really the document area. And I'll go ahead and just write section one. And just to be more accurate, just in case Microsoft does not use the word area, but just uses document, I'll just go ahead and stick with that one word. So this is called a document. And this is the area where you go ahead and you type something. And so if I go ahead and type something here, I'll just say, my name is Donnie. Of course, you know, I'm not in Microsoft Word right now, but I just want to show you that the place where you would type is in the document portion of the application. So that's section one. Section two is the quick access bar. And that's a little area at the very top here where you have your favorite icons and features that you like to use. So let's go ahead and call this section two. Section two, quick access toolbar. Okay, section three is going to be the tabs. So let's go ahead and draw some tabs. You have the file tab, you have the home tab, you have the insert tab, you have the design tab, and then you have several other tabs. There's a total of about nine tabs. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think the last two are review and view, um, and they give you different features. So let's go ahead and uh, let's type the name of one tab here. This is called the home tab. And so each of the tabs have names and they are called tabs. And so that is vocabulary that you want to teach to your students, tabs. Now under each tab is what's called a ribbon. And the ribbon is, it's basically a, a large area where all the features are highlighted underneath a particular tab. So if we're under the home tab, and I know this looks really messy, and so I hope your drawing capabilities are better than mine, but there's features that are inside of what's called the ribbon. And so when you click on home, you can find the feature that allows for you to boldface format a particular sentence. Okay, so we have two other sections here. I'm just going to go ahead and write them for completion and accuracy. So we'll call section three tabs and we'll call section four the ribbon. Okay, so we've learned four sections, the document section, the quick access toolbar, that's right here up at the top, the tabs, section three, and then section four, looks like I forgot the N at the end of section here on the ribbon but I'm gonna continue. Then we have what's called the status bar. So let's go ahead and draw the status bar. And at the bottom here 
it's basically an area that allows you to get some critical information about your document, such as the number of words. So we'll go ahead and say section 5, the status bar. Okay, section 6, now let me just go back to the status bar. On the status bar, you'll see down here the number of pages you have, the number of words in your document. You'll see an area where you can zoom in on your document, and you can also do some other activity. But it's a section that your students should be aware of. Okay, then the last two sections I want to highlight. And we know that, you know, there are literally thousands of features with Microsoft Word. So some of you may argue, you know what, there's way more than seven sections. But I would say, you know, it's like talking about a house. You know, you have the roof, you have the foundation, you have the bedrooms, the bathroom, the kitchen. It's There's the major sections. Now, I know you have the wires behind. I know you have the outlets. But to understand the overall structure of the house, you don't need to get to that detail. You mainly need to understand the major sections. And so another section is called the backstage section. And that is when you click on actually the file tab. And so let me just go ahead and click here. And I'm going to name this tab the file tab. When you click on that tab, it's actually going to open up, instead of a ribbon, it's going to open up an entire new area where you can do things for your particular document, such as save your document, print your document. And so I'm just going to draw a square. It's having trouble there saying square. Um, and then I'm just going to say save. So you can save your document there. And you can do things like print. Um, looks like it typed right over itself. Uh, so let me go ahead and click here. Do that again. Save. Click here. Print. So you can save and you can print. Okay, then the last area is really an area um, that's incredibly important, and that is um, the help area. Usually it's symbolized by a question mark. Um, you should know how to find different features on your own by clicking on the help area. Okay, so that's the lesson. That is the lesson. Now let's go ahead and open up Microsoft Word. You can open up Microsoft Word by a number of ways. If you're on like Windows 7 or Windows XP, you can go to Start, then Program Files, All Program Files, and then you can look for the applications of Microsoft Word. You can go to the Search feature. I can do that right here. I'm on Windows 8. I can click on Search, and I can just type in Microsoft Word. That comes up. I can then just go ahead and click on it and it brings me up a Word document. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close these. These are former documents. And we're gonna actually start with a new document. So I have pinned an icon on my operating system bar at the bottom here. So I can just go ahead and click here. And on a Mac, often you'll have a little icon there too. When it first opens up, it gives you a blank document. Notice this phrase, document, it calls the main entity of Microsoft Word, a document. And then let's look at the seven main sections. Here we have the place where you can type. This is the document. Then you have the quick access toolbar. That's this area up here. And I'll show you how you can actually add a new feature up here that's a favorite. Then you have the tabs. Each of these is a tab, file, home, insert, design. Then you have the ribbon. And the ribbon gives it more detailed features. Okay, so that's four sections, right? Document, quick access, tabs, and ribbon. The last three is we have the status bar down here. You'll notice I've typed four words, so it mentions four words right here. Um, there's also some other features down here. Now, you may say, why do I need to know there's four words? Well, it's interesting. College applications, sometimes they'll say, type no more than a 2,000-word essay. It's very helpful to do that. Or you may be a fifth grade teacher and it's like, I only want you to type 300 words. Well, they can use this to monitor that. Okay, so then there's the backstage area. If you click on file, you can actually go ahead and click like on save or you can click on print. You notice that's the same thing over here. You have save and you have print. Um, and then the last area is you have the help area, which is a question mark. So if you click on that question mark and you want to find out, how do I boldface something? You just type in bold, hit return. And then it'll say bold is under home font. Now home is the tab and font is the section in the ribbon. So look at here. All you have to do to find bold is you 
click on home and then each ribbon has a section area where it describes a category of features well font is here and lo and behold if you scroll your mouse over this particular button button is a word uh, you can boldface and it gives you the instruction you can either click on this button to just boldface or you can click on control B so if I go ahead and go to this sentence and let's go ahead and enlarge this I can go to my status bar and I can move this little slider to the right that makes it bigger for those of you who are watching this on your iPhone um, we can then highlight this and I can click boldface I can also type in hello and let's say I don't want that boldfaced I can hi highlight this again and I can click boldface again and it undoes the boldface if I spelled hello wrong like this H-E-L-O then I hit return you'll notice it does a red underline under the misspelled word I can go ahead and right click on that and it'll give me a variety of good spellings and I can choose one hello I click hello there if I want to erase I click on backspace back 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 if I want to hit tab I go ahead and click the tab button and if I want to hit numbers I just go ahead and type the numbers so these are the main structure of this particular lesson I'd like for you to get good and practice at least one time pulling out a piece of paper and writing the main sections and using the vocabulary that you heard me use to describe the sections because eventually you're gonna have a student in your class they're gonna raise their hand they're gonna say you know what um, mr. wise I have no understanding of what that thingy is in the top right in the Microsoft Word application you're gonna you're gonna say to yourself what's the thingy well what's even worse is the other students in the class are gonna go what is the thingy so if you train your students to say you know what Bobby don't say thingy say the definite the the vocabulary that I used when I described the sections so what are you talking about and then they'll go oh I'm talking about the third tab the third tab is called insert and I'm having a little trouble with one of the features in the ribbon and the rib uh, the button is called shapes well by answering your question that way that person has just used the vocabulary to help everyone in the classroom understand the different parts and actually go to the same place so that when you begin to give the answer of what is the shapes button everybody can navigate there and be at the same place so vocabulary is important great thank you very much please continue to the reading portion